Welcome back. A global online streamers like Netflix and Disney Plus and Amazon are set to spend big bucks in content uh, this year. Foreign content will be a major part of that. Netflix has publicly committed to spending two and a half billion on South Korean film and TV over the next four years. The popularity of shows like The Squid Game and The Glory has prompted a, a Korean wave among streaming services. Disney Plus is set to release more than 20 Asian original programs in the second half of this year. It is the largest slate of new originals uh, to date for the Asia Pacific region. And for more on what this means for you and I, I spoke to Rahul Talang. He's a trustees professor of information technology at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, he began by talking about Netflix. They have a big international footprint, so obviously they have a big market share in India, Turkey, U.S., England, Germany, you name it. So naturally, they have a lot of interest in producing show which actually fits the local culture, local tradition, local market. So they have an experience about how to create the local content, and they're also learning that some of this content actually can pass internationally. So Squid Game being a good example, it was a Korean uh, show, became hugely popular in the U.S. So my feeling is that they are also, you know, given that they have the international library, they are just trying to see that how can they uh, create content in one setting, one country, and be profitable in other countries. So I, I think given that they have the reach, they are in a good position to be able, able to take the advantage of you know, what, whatever is happening currently in, what, in the U.S. market. What, I mean, what about competition? Like if, if they were doing something, for example, in Japan or let's say Korea, I mean, there are obviously local streaming organizations or companies that they could set up a very similar deal with. If I was, if you and I were creating content, why would I choose Netflix over a local provider within the country? You see where I'm getting at? Yeah, absolutely. But but if you look at every different country, especially outside the U.S., um, they really don't have a good contract with the director, uh, writers, script writers. So there is no like a like a like a like a like we have in the U.S. Like a, there is a, a writers guild. I don't think that those kind of things exist outside. So what happens is that when the local uh, producers go and approach these uh, directors, actors, writers to create the content, they are not willing to pay them the kind of money that Netflix can actually throw, that, throw at them. So at are, some are level... You, are you saying they're, you mean they're going to... They're, Netflix or whatever the streaming service is going to buy the content or they're going to create the content? They basically hire these people to create the content. Right. Okay. So this this all makes much more sense. Where does this stop for for these content creators, if you will? Because you know, for them, it's still a business. If they spend a billion, they plan on making a billion and a half back or more, whatever the the metrics are for their profit margin. Right. What exactly do they look for when they're looking at foreign content? It's got to be much more of an international equation. I mean, uh, <laughs> that's a tricky question. You know, a lot of content is not a, will, not easily traveled. So if you make a content for the Jap Japanese market, for the Indian market, it's not obvious that that content will resonate in the U.S. market. So uh, they are creating the content for their local market because they are they have a pretty big footprint. The question is that can they actually take the content and make it succeed in the U.S.? And that's not a, not as simple that I make the content in Japan and able to actually, you know, show it in the U.S. because I don't think that every content can actually fly. Um, it's very cultural, so the local component plays a huge role. We recently saw um, earlier today Disney um, announcing they were going to increase the the price of their streaming services. And a lot of these companies, with aside from Netflix, who's obviously the clear winner, everyone else seems to really struggle with profitability. And I wonder if there's enough space in the industry for all of these streaming services to all go out and uh, and buy and create content. I mean, I know it's a gamble, but there appears to only be one winner thus far. Is that going to change? I, I think, you know, this, 
you know, you are saying about Netflix, but even there, if you look at that, they are also unwilling to spend the kind of money to create the content. And the whole strike is actually an outcome of the fact that the streaming companies and the producers are not willing to spend the money they were spending like two years ago because the whole market is realizing that the streaming market is not growing at the rate everybody thought it will grow. And the streaming companies are also saying that hey, we'll, we need to look at the profitability. You know, having the more customer alone will not be enough. And the moment they start looking at, looking at the profitability, then they have to start questioning about the, how much content they're producing. So if you look at the last two, three months, more, many of the shows are actually canceled, both on Netflix and obviously outside Netflix. So I think this, mar this, uh, this is a little bigger problem than beyond the other streaming companies.